pathologies of pulp first of all let's see the response of the normal pulp before we go ahead and discussing about the pulpal test with various pathologies of the pulp so the normal pulp is basically asymptomatic of course we don't have any pain if the pulp is normal but if some stimulus is uh, applied then there is a mild pain mild transient pain until the stimulus is there so we can't uh, term it as pain itself but it can be called as sensitivity so uh, if the condition is the normal pulp then the type of pain of course there won't be any pain so it will be asymptomatic now the, if thermal test is elicited then mild transient response which subsides when stimulus is removed so there will be hardly some uh, response from the pulp which will be telling that the pulp is vital otherwise there won't be any pain and that will remain only till the application of stimulus then uh, if we do the electric pulp testing then again we'll be having the mild transient response to tell the vitality of the pulp or to tell the health of the nerve fibers which are present then if we are doing the tenderness checking the tenderness on percussion there won't be any change uh, there won't be any pain why because percussion is a test basically done for the health of the periapical uh, periodontal ligaments or periapical ligaments so of course there won't be any uh, pathology in the periapical area also so that won't be showing any response by the pdl so pdl will also not show any response then we have the first pathology that is the reversible pulpitis when i say pulpitis that simply means the hyperemia that means the inflammation of the pulp when there is inflammation of the pulp since pulp is a closed cavity there will be build up of the pressure and that will be hurting the nerves present in the pulp and that will elicit the pain now if it is reversible that means it can be reversed the injury can be healed the injury is reversible injury and we can reverse it by simply providing the restoration to the tooth but if it is irreversible again that will be very complicated and we have to remove the pulp either pulpotomy or pulpal endodontic treatment has to be done so reversible pulpitis if it is the condition which is also known as the hyperemia of the pulp which can be seen in the carious condition of the tooth also so uh, type of pain usually it is asymptomatic vague pain of short duration will be elicited if you are uh, providing some stimulus some stimulus or application of cold or any other stimulus is provided then it will be showing symptoms until only till the stimulus is present or maximum five minutes not more than that quick sharp hypersensitivity will be there through the, to the thermal test that subsides when stimulus is removed then electric test will show the response at lower current threshold also again it is very important to remember that the electric pulp response will be at lower current threshold than the normal pulp so that will be uh, differentiating normal pulp and reversible pulpitis then percussion it can be percussion sensitive if the inflammation or the uh, this thing the infection has reached to the apical area now the next condition is the irreversible pulpitis which cannot be cured simply by uh, uh, putting the restoration over the surface of the pulp so uh, symptomatic irreversible pulpitis means the irreversible pulpitis which is having symptoms now irreversible pulpitis basically can be of two type asymptomatic and symptomatic so asymptomatic generally cannot be reversed the condition of the pulp cannot be reversed but it is not showing the pain maybe earlier pain was there patient can give the history of the pain but right now they they don't have any pain so symptomatic reversible pulpitis that pulpitis in which the patient is feeling the pain but it is of uh, irreversible in nature that means we have to do the pulp treatment only so uh, when we see the symptoms of this there will be spontaneous unprovoked pain during nights when i say during nights we have to note it down because there is a question asked in exams that why it is done during the night so when the patient is laying down in the laying down condition the total pressure in the pulp increases leading to because there is more venous return so more venous return will also come to the pulp and that will lead to pain so uh, the patient with symptomatic irreversible pulpitis basically give history of pain during night or when they lay lie down lay down again this pain is not intermittent but continuous in nature so that will remain for longer and when the stimulus even is after removed also then also there will be pain 
so it is generally aggravated by heat and some author says that it is relieved by cold which is again a very important point for the examination point of view because the question can be asked that the pain of the symptomatic irreversible pulpitis is relieved by and the answer to that comes to be cold the uh, reason behind this can be the cold can lead, lead to the vasoconstriction which will re further relieving the uh, pressure in the pulpal cavity and will lead will relieve some symptoms then the on thermal test will be having the painful response to cold and heat stimulation that lingers longer when stimulation is removed even after removal of the stimulus it will be there more than five minutes and uh, unlike the reversible pulpitis which is subside even just after removal of the thermal stimulus then the electrical pulp response response required higher currents compared to normal tooth again this is important to remember that here uh, in the reversible pulpitis we had the response even at the lower threshold than the normal pulp but, but in this condition to uh, elicit a response we need higher currents again this is very important and this is basic point which we have to remember again percussion tender net on percussion it can be percussion sensitive so both reversible and irreversible can be sensitive or cannot be sensitive okay then we have the total necrosis of pulp when i say total necrosis of the pulp that simply means the whole pulp is dead now there is no nerve fiber there is no vascularity in that area that means there won't be any response to anything so it will be showing the history of previous continuous pain because before getting the total necrosis there might be a condition where the reversible pulpitis will be there which has uh, which has uh, evolved into the irreversible pulpitis and after that the total necrosis of pulp has occurred that means earlier patient was giving the was having the pain and he gives the history of earlier episodes of the pain so for the total necrosis the symptoms will be just the history and that will be telling you the uh, that there were previous episodes of pain now patient is not having any pain because of the necrosis of pulp that means the nerve fibers are also necrosed then there won't be any response uh, to cold thermal test heat test no response to the electric pulp test and there won't be no percussion sensitivity also so uh, unfortunately are these tests are just telling you the uh, viability of the nerves not the uh, uh, blood vessels so uh, when <coughs> nerves are not there no response will be there then we have the suppurative pulpitis now in this there will be throbbing pain which is aggravated by heat and of course relieved by cold no response to the heat test or the cold test that is the thermal test no response to electric pulp test but it will be tender to percussion because the inflammation has reached to the periapical area where the periodontal ligaments are there and they will be showing the tenderness to the percussion now the sequelae of this pulp uh, pathology the infection has of course uh, reached to the periapical area and that will be causing the inflammation of peri pe periodontal ligaments so the apical periodontitis of the vital teeth that basically occurs due to the occlusal trauma so why it is so this is basically due to the inflammation of periapical ligaments and uh, that is also known as the apical periodontitis of vital teeth now symptoms to this will be pain on clenching of the teeth and localized mild dull constant pain now this particular line is very important because this is the characteristic of the pdl inflammation the pulpal nerves are not localizing are not proprioceptive but the pain due to the pdl can be well localized can be dull constant pain so the localization here itself tell you that there is problem with the pdl so there won't be any response to uh, uh, heat test cold test no response to the electric pulpal test and of course there will be tenderness due to the percussion why there will be tenderness due to the percussion because the periodontal ligaments are inflamed so when you are percussing it like this so there will be depression inside the uh, apical area which will be stimulating the periodontal fibers and that will be leading to pain now we have the apical periodontitis of non-vital teeth so again now it has become non-vital so history of uh, previous continuous pains will be there 
mild dull and constant pain will be there no response to the thermal test no response to the electrical pulp test but there will be tenderness to the percussion due to the inflammation of the periodontal ligament so all these uh, pathologies from normal pulp to the reversible pulpitis to the irreversible pulpitis and then the periapical pathologies these all are increasing in sequence so these are time dependent and they come in sequence basically now the next sequel to this uh, pulpal pathology then it is coming to the apical area of the uh, tooth then it will be forming the acute apical abscess which is generally relieved by, by clenching of the teeth in this the symptoms will be swelling will be there with throbbing pain there won't be any response to any of the pulpal tests either it is thermal or the electrical pulp testing and tenderness and mobility can be seen so tenderness to percussion will be there and mobility can also be seen in acute apical abscess now this acute on time and if treatment is not given then it becomes the chronic apical abscess absence of symptoms will be there there will be history of pain so that will be saying only due to the pulpal problem or the periapical problem that the patient gives the uh, history of episodes of the pain then there won't be any response to any type of the pulpal test and then there can be occasional slight tenderness so it is not necessary that in the chronic apical abscess you will be having the top positive but it can be occasional uh, the question here states that response at lower current threshold is seen in so when it is saying that lower current that means the ept is being talked about that is electric pulp tester is being talk talked about now we already have known that the normal pulp will show some response but it will not be lower at lower current because whatever we are comparing will be comparing with the normal pulp itself so this cannot be the answer then we have irreversible pulpitis now this irreversible pulpitis is known for increased threshold means the uh, if uh, EPT is coming at 16 uh, milliwatt then here it will be coming at higher uh, intensity so it needs higher threshold means its th threshold increases the third one is the reversible pulpitis and it is known for the sensitivity of the tooth at lower current threshold so answer to this will be a that is reversible pulpitis then we have one of the most favorite questions uh, so on the pulpal pathologies the pain of which pulpal pathosis is aggravated by heat and relieved by cold so here it's saying aggravated by heat but interesting thing is it is asking about which is relieved by cold as we know in the thermal testing uh, if we are uh, the pulpal pathology is there and we are testing with the heat and cold both will be causing the pain but there are few conditions in which the pain is relieved by cold why it is relieved it is relieved due to the vasoconstriction uh, in the vessels that will uh, decrease the pulpal pressure and hence pressure on the nerve endings will be less so uh, first option is symptomatic irreversible pulpitis as we have already discussed that yes there will be a relief if cold stimulus is applied in symptomatic irreversible pulpitis as well as in suppurative pulpitis also you will be having a relief because uh, in suppuration there will be a lot of pressure due to the exudative fluid and when vasoconstriction is there at least pulpal pressure will be less due to the uh, cold uh, uh, temperature and that will uh, relieve the symptom so answer to this question will be both one and three that is fourth